A good Friday afternoon to you guys and gals, and thanks for joining me on the ninth edition of the Random Warren Poorly Produced Podcast Project. I realize I lied to you last time and said it was nine times, but after reviewing my records, it turns out that last time was number eight, and this is number nine. And I suppose to you that hardly matters. So, anyway, I thought I would dive into a Friday edition with a bit of a mailbag, and coming off writing my blueprint, which went up yesterday, for how I would address the Twins' needs and the Twins' offseason and, and what direction I would take if I were handed the keys by Terry Ryan, Dave St. Peter, and Jim Polad. Now, we all know that's not going to happen. We all know that my blueprint, which features, I'm not going to give it all away, signing Russell Martin and Kobe Rasmus, that's, none of that's, that's probably not going to happen. But at the same time, it, for me, it just boils down to a couple things. Why sign Ricky Nolasco to a big contract if you don't plan on trying to contend soon and spending that kind of money on a pitcher that you believe can help you that much? Ricky Nolasco is not a patch it together kind of talent, at least not at $12 million a year. Anyway, so be, between that and, and furthering away any more of Joe Maurer's career, I think it, my, my blueprint tried to kind of dive into the idea that the Twins need to quit dinking and dunking around and make a run for it. And if anything proves that this year it's I mean this playoffs has been teams that went for it and and not necessarily just went for it but they 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 buy into their team concept but they've also not been the most talented teams in the playoffs sometimes it's just the best team at that particular time so the biggest part of the battle is just getting there so the twins need to focus in my opinion on getting to that point where they can win 80 81 82 games get over 500 and then variance alone could bring you into the playoffs. I mean, neither of these teams have more than 90 wins. The Twins could do something like that in the very near future with just a little bit of improvement. So I reached out for some questions on Twitter. I got some pretty good ones, actually. I'm going to try to answer all of them here within the 15 minutes that I have allotted. The first one is from Hot Takes on Sports on Twitter, at Hot Takes on Sports. And he asks... What are the odds that the Twins put May and Meyer in the bullpen? And that was something my blueprint addressed, which was getting a ro- getting rotation spots for Tommy Malone and a player who I have the Twins acquiring for the number four spot. And I'm not going to give it away. I-, I do want people to read that. So anyway, with the way my rotation was set up on opening day, the top two guys in the bullpen were Trevor May and Alex Meyer. And that's not an indication of where I want to see them for the future, but I think it's time to bring them up here. You know, Trevor May's got his feet wet. It's a good, it'd be a good time for Meyer to get his feet wet too. And and the bullpen seems to be a good place for that. And, and, and the other thing, the elephant in the room that can't be ignored is that the possible future of those two pitching in the bullpen. Now, would that be a worst-case scenario? Absolutely. But... Starting them in the bullpen doesn't necessarily pigeonhole them into that role, but it is a good way to see what they can do in that role, get them in the big leagues, get their feet, feet, not feet, excuse me, wet, and have them handy in the event that a spot start is needed. And you can send them to Rochester and lengthen or stretch them out without too much trouble. Now, that also allows you to spend less money on relievers, that is, not bringing back Jared Burton, non-tendering Anthony Swarzak, non-tendering... Brian Dunsing, and saving money on the bullpen while not necessarily sacrificing any quality because it was a pretty bad bullpen last year. And I got into a little bit of a disagreement with some people on on Twitter about that too, is the the worst strikeout rate among bullpens. And yeah, they were used a lot, but less than the year before when they had a fantastic bullpen. So they need to shake it up. I think they need to, to do some things in the bullpen. I think bringing in some new blood, and having it be some of the top prospects. Give Ryan Presley and Michael Tonkin the keys to a couple of spots in the bullpen. Keep Caleb Thielbar out there so you do have a lefty. I don't necessarily think a lefty is necessary because if you've got righties that can get lefties out, it really doesn't make any difference. But I, I would absolutely put May and Meyer in the bullpen. Now, the question, which I've kind of circumvented, not intentionally, of course, was what are the odds that the Twins do that? I don't think they're high, but I don't think... I think the odds of it are higher than having both of them in the rotation to start the season, because you know Trevor May or Alex May around a gas towards the end of the season last year. I don't think he's a short list guy to make the rotation, no matter how many open spots they have this this season. And I only really see one 
because I think if Tommy Malone goes to arbitration with the Twins, there's no way they're going to put his $2 million salary in the bullpen or, or do something else with it. So I think you've got the top three spots filled with Hughes, Nolasco, and Gibson, and I think you've got Malone at the four or five spot, and that leaves a spot for either Trevor May or whoever. But to put both of them in the bullpen, it's, it's not a move that I think signals the end of either of them as, as prospects or as highly thought of guys, but rather can build some excitement, let fans see some new blood in the bullpen, which is, is an underrated, cheap way to build some excitement. And I think that's something the Twins should consider. The next question I'd like to address is from Clarence Swamptown, C. Swamptown on Twitter. He asks that... First, he says a statement. You offered a blueprint for what you'd like to see done. What do you think the 2015 opening day lineup will actually look like? And that's something I plan on getting to. I do plan on doing a couple more blueprints with maybe like a percentile concept where this would be my... The one I did yesterday was my 100 percentile. How I would, if given the keys, do this without thinking about anything else. Now, maybe a more moderate option will be will be next and then a conservative one which unfortunately is the, is the route I think the Twins would take. I think if the Twins add one starting position player or one starting pitcher through free agency based on what we read in that Star Tribune column that Phil Miller wrote that to me would be surprising. I don't I don't necessarily think they're going to go out and sign anybody and on the surface, I, I get that. It's not necessarily a bad thing because they do have young players that they want to see what they can do. But at the same time, you really should hedge against regression in some form or fashion. Are you going to go into next season with Jordan Schaefer in left and, and Aaron Hicks in center? I, I just I don't think that's a really great idea. But at the same time, I know they're not going to go nuts and go crazy with the plans that I've laid, too. So honestly, I think... As long as Trevor Plouffe is healthy, and there's no reason to believe he won't, won't be healthy, uh, or if they move Maurer off of first base, which again I think is pretty aggressive, I just I don't think it's going to look that much different. I think if they move Maurer off first base to left field, Hicks and, and Schaefer in center, you could see a lineup with Josmil Pinto at DH, Kenny Vargas at first, Kurt Suzuki catching. Then in that case, I don't know. Pinto probably doesn't act as the backup catcher anymore, and I'm just I'm not sure how I feel about that either. But I think it's going to be, if it's not eight of the same guys, it might be all nine, and that that might mean Danny Santana in center field again too. Uh, a lot of things can change between then and now, and I, I feel like this is probably kind of a cop out to answering your question, but I don't know that the Twins are going to make a whole lot of moves and. In some ways, I really do back that idea and feel good about that. But at the same time, as a, and not really a fan, I'm still I still consider myself a media person, and maybe that's not how the Twins feel about me. But that is how I feel, and I, I still want to see the Twins succeed. And I think that this year has to be a year where you got to give the Twins a re, Twins fans a reason to come out to the stadium. And right now, short of a team that even with a bunch of Pretty fun young kid. Still wasn't very good this year. I'm just not buying it. I don't. I don't. Don't feel it right now. And so, anyway, let's move on to the next one. And that is, who is your next? Who's your first choice for manager out of Tori Lavallo, Paul Molitor, Doug Mankiewicz, Joe McEwing, Gene Glenn, Demarlo Hale, and Sandy Alomar Jr. and, and Curse of Punto, who who sends this also. Added Aaron Gleeman's name on the end of that. But uh, anyway, I would go... Honestly, if it were me choosing, and I can't really put a finger on why this would be my choice, but I think Sandy Alomar Jr. would be a good fit. I, I, I'm i fond of the catchers. I, I like former catchers as managers. It's obviously been a popular thing with Mike Matheny and Brad Osmus and, and countless other other teams. And it's it's worked... To, to whatever it, it's hard to really know to what degree it works because of the the really lack of understanding of of how much managers actually do help but i just for, for that list the name that jumps on me is sandy alomar jr he's been a hot candidate for a number of different places i think you know he he just he just seems like the right guy i think tory lavallo would be another great choice 
obviously nailed his uh his interview with the twins is what uh, what Doogie Wolfson reported a couple of days ago. I th- I really do believe you need to go out of the organization. Is is kind of how I'm feeling. I do believe Molitor though or Mankiewicz would do fine. I believe Molitor embraces analytics and Mankiewicz does have that vestige to the last or that that bit of the last successful Twins run. You know, the beginning of that when the Twins needed to scratch and claw their way to to win games, he could instill some of that in guys. But to, to what extent, I don't know. Because if if guys don't buy into it, it's just helpless or, or worthless. So I don't want a, a guy who is a rah rah guy that players don't get behind. And, and so I think Minkiewicz would not be that guy because a lot of these guys had him in the minor leagues as a manager. I think they really like him, but. I just I want a guy who's going to innovate, who's going to change it up, who's going to do things differently and see the game in a different way than what we've seen over the past, if we're quite honest, 30 seasons. And so, yeah, uh, the last one that I have on Twitter was from X-Twins News. If you're not following him, you really need to be because he keeps up on all the former Twins. Why isn't Danny Santana's rookie season sustainable? And this is something I've broken down, you know, basically – non-stop all season long and to the point where I think people are pretty much sick of hearing about it but Danny Santana you know obviously had a great season uh, wasn't a good hitter in the minor leagues or not a great hitter in the minor leagues had a 405 batting average on balls in play which means when he put it in play he hit 400 405 now the last time I looked and I'm, I'm breaking down the leaderboards here so bear with me I think like since 2000 and if you split the seasons, and I'm just going to do it now because I got the computer handy. If you split seasons from 2000 to 2014, that is, you know, the turn of the century, kind of the middle of the steroid era, kind of the end of the steroid era, and you split seasons and you break up batting average on balls in play, two players have had batting average on balls in play over 400. That is out of 2,290 seasons. And none of them were as high as Danny Santana's 405. Manny Ramirez at 403 in 2000. And Jose Hernandez of the Brewers at 404. So, no, I mean, it, it, I, I get that batting average on balls in play is not really this stat that everybody loves. And it's, it's not really as predictive as I think people want it to be. Because previous batted balls don't affect the next batted ball. And so luck reversing course on the basis of previous batted balls, in my mind, I can't really put that together either. But at the same time, and I want to ride this Santana train as long as it is, because that kind of production in this era, which is to say a, 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 a dampened or a lesser era offensively, is great. It's great to see a guy like Santana do that. But it just it, there's there's so many things about what he did that aren't sustainable. He didn't walk enough to hit like that, and it just uh, it, it feels like grasping at straws for people who don't agree with me. And I get that, and, and I'm okay with that. It's just that, uh, that that's where I'm at. So I I don't think it will happen. Now let's jump to Facebook and uh, dive into a couple more questions here in the last minute and a half. Um, my buddy Rick wants to know, when will Alex Meyer be in the major leagues? I think it'll be early this year, depending on when they have a spot, and uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Zach Bennett wants to know if Terry Steinbach will be retained. I think that entirely leans on who is uh, brought in as a manager. I think if it's somebody inside the organization, he stays. Even if it's somebody outside the organization, I think it might be 50-50, just because I think he's well-respected. Now, the trouble is, he's the bench coach. A lot of managers want their own bench coach, so I'm not exactly... Sure. Uh, Adam Seidel wants to know, at what position would the Twins benefit by signing even a short-term deal with a free agent? And how many blood vessels will I burst if they sign another starting pitcher for $5 million? Lots of blood vessels. I think an outfielder. Bringing an outfielder to supplement the guys that are there would be a good move. Colby Rasmus, guys. Colby Rasmus. Last one. Ryan Meehan wants to know, how are the farmhands performing in the Arizona Fall League? Eddie Rosario hitting 440. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, 4... 4... I'm sorry. Eddie Rosario is hitting 444. There we got it. Uh, five RBIs. He's got a double and 12 singles. Uh, Kepler not doing particularly well. Jason Adam is getting blasted. The relievers have been fantastic. Jake Reed is awesome. And that's all the time we got. All right, thanks.